Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. I'm going to be continuing the binding series, showing you now how to do the most basic binding that I learned early on as a quilter. In our first video, we showed you how to prepare binding, maybe even choose binding, thinking about the color, uh, butt joints, 45 degree joints. So now that the binding is ready to go, let me show you the most basic approach that I do actually most of the time still to this day unless I have a compelling reason to maybe do a different type of binding. Um, I like two and a half inch strips. I mentioned that before. The first thing is I like to open up my binding that I've prepared. This is just pressed in half. And I like to fold that down like this. So it creates a 90 degree angle. I'm going to bring that to my pressing mat and let's just press that. Um, you want to always start a binding on a side of the quilt. The side really doesn't matter. Don't ever start a binding in the corner. You'll see why that is just not a good idea here. So I've made that, I've made that press and now I'm going to kind of fold that back. All right. Now let's pretend like this is my quilt. This is my side. I'll start anywhere. Um, maybe maybe I like that spot. The first thing I'm going to do Now you've got a couple options. You can be pinning your binding on or you can be using the wonder clips. I think I have some here. Yeah, let me show you these. These are these are just a blessing. I love these clips. Sometimes I forget what's the right I think I open those upside down, but it works. You could pin this on or you could clip your binding on with these wonder clips. Sometimes I tend to poke myself doing this. Your decision. Um, most binding, uh, you want a quarter inch showing. You could opt to have more showing and have a greater seam allowance, but if that's the case, you'll need to have wider binding strips. This two and a half inches is assuming a quarter inch binding seam allowance, and that's what we'll be using today. So I'm gonna go to my sewing machine and I'm going to start sewing my quarter of an inch without the, with the flap open till probably about here. And then I'm going to close it and continue. Leaving this flap opens allows the end of this to tuck in. That's the most simplest approach to binding a quilt. So I'm going to take the one clips away just for the moment. And I'm just going to, I'm, I really typically don't pin at this stage. So I'm just going to show you what I normally would do. Let's bring that over to the sewing machine. Notice how I, I kind of wrap my binding up, especially on a big quilt. I mean, it can be 400 inches long of binding and it's just everywhere. So I have found that if you kind of roll it up, um, you could even clip part of that together. It's just a little bit easier to manage <laughs> than this big long thing kind of trailing you around with this quilt. So let's get started. As you would expect, we're going to reinforce that. I'm going to open up my flap. Not about there. I'll go ahead and close this flap now. I'm just going to come back and sew over that. Now let's come, come right down to about right about there where we'll pick it up. Now you want to have a, a friction pen handy or some other marking tool. Or if you are comfortable with a visual quarter of an inch, you are going to sew the binding strip to the front of the quilt. I wasn't clear about that. This is, let's just pretend like this is the front of the quilt. Binding strips are sewn to the front side of the quilt. And when we come to the corner, we stop a quarter inch from that corner. You can just visually try to understand where that is, or you could literally get out your marking tool such as this, come up to this and visually mark it. And that's your stopping point. That's your stop sign. Do not go past that point. So let's come into the corner. As you get closer, slow down. Don't go past that place. If you have a uh, sewing machine with a needle down option, choose it because it's going to be easier to see yourself if you hit that target. Now I like to 
literally take it away from the sewing machine at that point. Plus I want to show you what I'm doing. Um, I don't try to do mitered corners all attached to the sewing machine. I stop each time, bring this out. Now, I turn this and give myself a little bit more space here. I'm going to go roll that back so I create the miter and I'm continuing the visual line like this and then I'm going to fold it back on top of itself so it's all flush. I'm going to pin that real quick because I'm nervous about that shifting. And I'm going to go ahead and mark where I'm going to start again. Quarter inch. That's the miter. And that gives such a professional look. Okay, so I'm going to go start back here again. And again, if you have a needle down position or you can just hand crank the needle down, which I'm going to do right now, I'm going to start in that dot that I just created. I'm going to go forward a stitch or two. I'm going to back up. Whatever you go forward, only go back that amount, not more, or you'll go past that. And again, a quarter of an inch until you come to the next corner and you'll repeat that. So I'm going to miter these corners and I'm going to, when I come back, I'll be coming down the home stretch and then I'll show you how to bring the end of that in with the beginning and how to uh, finish up your binding. Okay, I want to show you what I'm doing here so you're seeing this. Coming around the home stretch, I've got all this extra binding. I'm going to be tucking this flap into here, so I'm going to, I'm going to probably stitch a little bit further before I make that cut. Goodness knows, you don't want to cut it too short. Okay, now I'm at the point where I can see that if I trim about this much away, this will easily tuck into this flap, just like this. And I will keep sewing. Reinforce that. And now that is all tucked in. And then to finish the quilt, you simply roll, see there's the joint right there. You simply roll this around to the back. And this is where I love those wonder clips. They're just, it's so wonderful to work with. And yes, you can absolutely do the pins. You could do this as another option and you pin on the back side. Okay, like this. When you get to the corner here, let me trim those threads away. I like to uh, roll the edge over and then hand sew it. I don't kind of do a little section and then stitch it down. I like to put everything down. No, so again, option for pins. I love the wonder clips. Let's go with the wonder clips. As I come into the corner, push this this way and bring it back over on top of itself. Sometimes, even if you do this section almost ahead of time down here, you'll see what I mean here shortly. Like this. Now you have that miter in the corner that you're looking for right there. And I'm going to put a clip right there. And right here. So I want you to show you what that looks like from the front side. Isn't that beautiful? And you would, of course, continue clipping all the way around. How to finish this? Some people don't like hand sewing. <laughs> um, I do like hand sewing. Um, if you're having a quilt judged, do this by hand. If you anticipate entering this into a competition, absolutely sew this down. I would use a coordinating thread, a white, or cream, whatever you're doing, and this is just a little whip stitch that you're getting in there, and you are, um, I'll do a couple stitches here shortly. I'll get a needle and thread and show that to you. 
Some people are like, nope, I don't care. This is a functional quilt. This is gonna be one that's by the TV and washed a million times. If that's the case, then what you can do is called stitch in the ditch. You kind of just pull this aside. In fact, let's do this together. Let's, let's stitch together. And then I'll, I'll come back and I'll show you how to do the, the whip stitch. But if you're going to do not want to do the hand sewing, I'm kind of pushing that binding out of the way. I don't dare do this without my glasses. And I am just very carefully. Okay. Working in small sections, pulling that binding out of the way because when it relaxes, it's going to cover up that, that thread. Okay, that's, that's the quick way to do binding. I want to show you what that looks like on the back side so you see this. Okay. See how you really can't see that? I pulled that binding out of the way, stitched in the ditch, it's hidden, and the back side is secured. If you're going to go ahead and secure the binding by hand, again, this is what I do. I very rarely sew a binding down um, by machine because sometimes I don't stitch in the ditch very thoroughly. The few times I've done it that way, I kind of bleed out onto the, the thread kind of goes out onto the, my background and it's just not quite the look I was looking for. Um, I've got a cotton thread. Um, this is a 50 weight. You can use a 40 weight. Whatever you want to do, I coordinate that thread to match my background. So the first thing I do is I kind of lift up. Let me get in a section that is set in here. I like to hide the knot up inside like this. Then I come to that edge. I'm just going into that little quilt sandwich, but I'm not to the front. I'm on the back side of it. And I'm just picking up the edge of that binding ever so subtly. I don't know if you can see that. I want you to notice it. It's, I'm just grabbing it. Now I know, again, I mentioned if you're going to have a quilt entered, you will want to probably learn um, how many stitches is expected to occur within an inch. I've heard eight, so every eighth of an inch you have another stitch. Um, I don't enter my quilts for judging. My quilts are for my family and my friends to enjoy, so I don't really worry about having that exact interval, but if you are going to have a quilt judged, it is something that I believe they take into account, so you might want to get a little more specific in the interval of those strips, or the stitches. Okay, now that that's in, I'm gonna come right beneath where my thread comes out, Again, I'm on the back side of that quilt sandwich, not all the way to the front, and I'm just gonna rock my needle, again, catching that. And I come out, and I keep going. The one thing that I've learned in hand binding that's important is whatever tension I do right here on that little pull, you do it the same every time. Don't crank down on that, or you're gonna get these little puckers on the back side. And then you'll just continue on. So. That is, and just continue all the way around. Um, if you need to tie off, of course you're gonna run short of thread. Again, I like to tie off underneath here so it's hidden, and then come back with my next length of thread and start again. Um, so be sure to join me on the next binding tutorials where I'll take this from, a, from this basic to the next level where you won't have that little sandwich here. It'll truly be seamless. You will not be able to tell where the binding started and the binding ended.